welcome back to another episode of the Sister Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Gold Chain Diva. <laughs> and y'all already know I'm just a sister who has a lot to talk about. And from week to week, I have more and more things that I would like to talk about. Okay. Now, this week, I told y'all, listen, it's a twofer. We going back to back. Okay. Listen, it's been a couple weeks. Since I gave you all the episode because of my birthday and, you know, I'm outside Leoing, okay? (laughs) I've been outside Leoing real quick. So, you know, I had to come and give y'all two episodes this week so y'all can go ahead and stay tuned with your girl and don't leave me and go for, you know, go look at another podcast, okay? So, your sister's giving you two episodes this week. Um, I already told you what my week was like a couple days ago. But in case you're wondering, you know, what happened in a couple of days, reality set in for your girl okay um as you all know i'm in transition at the moment uh so right now you know your girl is feeling the pressure um but like i've said before you know the lord is a provider so i already know that all my needs are going to be taken care of and there's no need for me to stress and some type of door some type of window some type of chimney it's about to open up for me. So I'm getting ready to walk through whatever that next door is. And I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm not going to speak no negativity. I'm put all the positive vibes in the, in the atmosphere, in the universe. And I'm just going to watch it all come back to me. So hopefully your kids had a great first week, second week. I don't know how many weeks your kids been in school. But I hope that they've been having a great time in school. Hope you all are getting rest. Okay, I hope you all are enjoying having the house back to your house Uh, yourself. I hope that you all are enjoying having a full refrigerator. (laughs) Well, without further ado, I'm just going to jump right into it this week. I'm about to spill the tea. Okay, listen, you already know the motto. Keep them pinkies up now. Everybody knows, and if you don't know, now you know, okay? You know that your girl, um, your sister, loves Nipsey Hussle, okay? God rest his soul. Um, I've been a big Nipsey fan even before he passed away. Um, And like I've said before on other podcasts, you know, I really enjoyed Nipsey because of his philosophy and because of his outlook on the world and just his impact and thirst to teach people beyond what they're exposed to um I I just love his story I love everything he stood for and so honestly when he passed away it was literally like like they always say which celebrity like hit you the hardest when they passed away I gotta say that Nip hit me the hardest when he passed away like when I tell you I cried I cried I remember sitting at my desk at the time literally like when his funeral service because I mean it was hours I remember watching that thing from the time it started to the time it ended, like literally sitting at my desk, like tuned in. Okay. Didn't even care if I was going to get fired or what. So I really love Nipsey and what he stood for. And honestly, like in his death, um, I've been listening a little bit more to his music and I can say, you know, cause at first I was only exposed to victory lap cause that was his latest piece of work. But honestly, like after listening to some of his older music, like I could really say like, I'm, I'm a true Nipsey, like Nipsey fan. Like I really like his music too. But I brought up Nipsey because um, there was a wax figure that was just revealed in his honor at InvestFest in Atlanta last week. Um, And a lot of people have mixed reviews on it. A lot of people have mixed reviews on it. My my personal opinion, and I'm going to put a picture up here so you see it. My personal opinion is the artist who is a black person, okay? So this company was a black-owned company um, created by a man named Mr. Officials, and he's from Cleveland. And he inv- he unveiled this wax figure at InvestFest in Atlanta um, during a part of a competition in hopes to win and secure a $100,000 grand prize. Now, personally, I'm not sure if he was the one who won because I, I didn't hear much knowledge about I, I don't believe that he was the one who won. Um, however, I'd say that this was one of the best wax figures that I've seen in a very long time. Um, out of all the wax figures that we've seen, I'll say that... They've been really good, but I mean, I think the most recent was probably Lil Wayne, and that was the one where I was just like, yeah, 
they could have kept that one to themselves because they did a horrible job. Like, I know he only got five dreadlocks, but we didn't have to be so literal. <laughs> but I think that Nipsey's statue, I mean, I, I, I want to call this thing a statue. His wax figure was one of the best that I've seen. And I really love the fact that it was actually created by a black owned business. Um, and so I, I love to see it. I love to see us thriving. I'm happy to see that, you know, the legacy is still continuing. The marathon is still continuing um, and that people are still honoring his impact in this world. Um, so I'm very happy to see this uh, wax, wax figure. But the reason why it's so controversial and people have mixed reviews is because if you've seen the picture of this wax figure, um, one of his legs, I, you can kind of see my legs a little bit in the camera, but one of his legs is, you know, straight up because he's standing straight up. And then the other one is kind of bent like you kind of see my leg here. Um, but that's because, you know, they they created him with the idea that he would be posted up leaning on a wall or something. And so when you see it actually in its environment and see it actually leaning up against something, like you actually can be like, oh, okay, like that's dope. Like that's decent because we don't really get to see a lot of wax figures that have certain poses. They're normally just either standing up, sitting down, laying down, but they're never like just chilling. Um, so that, that was really interesting to me, but a lot of people really like took to the comments and was just clowning this thing because it was like, where's his other leg? And why is he standing like that? And it would be better if his leg was down. So, you know, black people always got something to say, but personally, I thought it was a really well done wax figure. What are your thoughts? Are you a Nipsey fan? Did you, did you think this was executed well? Do you think his legs should have been down? Both his legs should have been flat on the ground. I don't know. Let me know in the chat. Now, the next thing I would like to spill the tea on is our girl, Miss Brandy Norwood, okay? Miss Brandy Norwood. Miss Brandy Norwood, if you don't know who she is, because this new generation irks me, okay? Listen, I, 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 think that most of my viewers are above the age of at least 25 okay I think my demographic is somewhere between like 25 and 55 so I hope it's safe to say that my audience knows who Brandy Norwood is and knows the impact that she's had on the entertainment industry over the years so if you don't know you better put some respect on sis's name sis has been around for a minute okay sis um was Moesha. Sis was the Black Cinderella. Listen, she ran so Tiana could walk, okay? <laughs> Listen, she ran, okay? Um, Brandy, I mean, she's most notably known for her vocals in general and her longtime, I guess, playful rivalry with Monica with the, the boy is mine. I just sung the wrong version of that song, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Um... And so many other things. Brandy had a short rap career. Brandy is known to be Ray J's sister. Brandy is known for every role that she's ever acted in. Um, Brandy, Brandy is just that girl, okay? Timeless, okay? For her to be the age that she is, she is looking very, very timeless. And she's doing the damn thing. I think that she's constantly reinvented herself over and over and over again to stay relevant over the years but the reason why i wanted to bring up brandy this week is because she did a recent interview where they asked her who she would like to play her in a biopic of her life and you know she thought very quick on her feet and the person that she said she would like to play her is our good sis Haley bailey and the internet is eating her up listen first of all they, they really disrespected my girl because you got people in the comments that was like, is she really that famous to have a biopic? Bi biopic? Get a life, okay? Do your research. Google, okay? Listen, it, it really made me mad because I'm just like, y'all not about to sit here and play and act like Brandy not who she is. But the internet is in a tizzy because some people agree with her choice to have Haley Bailey play it some people feel like she was just under pressure and she just was saying anything <laughs> me personally I thought it was a good look I thought it was a good look like I'd say that it's a nice matchup I think it's a nice matchup because 
Brandy to me has very uh Asian features. Like her eyes are very, you know, very slender, very almond shaped or whatever. And I think Haley, even though they don't look identical, and even though, you know, they may be a little shade, like one shade off from each other, I do believe that Haley, to me, gives that same innocence and that same vibe that Brandy gave when she was a lot younger. So I agree with the choice to have Haley. Now, obviously, it floated around on the internet that Haley would actually play Janet Jackson in her biopic, which I also think that's a good fit as well. Now, other names that got thrown around was Coco Jones. And I'm I'm not going to lie. Like, she came across my mind as well. But I haven't heard anybody say this. Now, I'm going to throw this other name out here that nobody has said, but I think that it would be a good fit. Ryan Destiny. I think Ryan Destiny would actually be a nice fit to play a young Brandy. I think she would kill it. Now, of course, you know, at this point, Kiki Palmer has done a lot of biopics. So, I mean, Kiki Palmer could get tossed in the conversation as well. But I don't know. Listen, let me know down in the chat. How do you feel about her name dropping Haley Bailey? Do you think that she would be a good fit? Do you think that Coco Brown would be a better fit? And, and, and what y'all think about Ryan Destiny or even Kiki Palmer? Let me know in the chat. Let's spill the tea on another topic. So, I don't know if you all are familiar with who Bobby Altoff is. Um, but the reason why I want to talk about Bobby Altoff is because she irritates me. <laughs> like, she irks my soul. Um, and I think she irks me more so because um, if you're not familiar with who Funny Marco is, Funny Marco is a comedian who has a very similar comedic style who blew up on social media. And she pretty much took his, like, his niche, took his comedic style and basically ripped him off and became much bigger than him. Now, provided Funny Marco, he's holding it down. You know, he still is doing his thing. He's securing bigger artists. And I think that's because a lot of artists saw what happened to him when it came to his relationship with Bobby and wanted to step in and make sure that they supported our own. And which I'm 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 happy for that. Like they deserve a hand clap for that because they didn't let our brother hang out the drive. So I really appreciated that. But the reason why I want to talk about Bobby Altoff is because, like I said, she irritates the crap out of me. <laughs> like, it's really no rhyme or reason that I really want to talk about this girl other than the fact that she irritates me. Um, I feel as though Funny Marco is way more funny. I feel as though she's just a fraud. And I feel like she just... I, I, don't, I don't understand the hype. I don't understand the hype. I'm sorry. And honestly, it's not a black or white thing. It's really not. But I just don't understand what the hype is over this girl. To me, she's not funny. She's very lackluster. And she's boring. How does this have millions of views online? I don't know. Uh, the first time that she came across my radar was when she did the interview with Offset. And Offset pretty much dug in her behind. And listen... I thought that was the funniest thing, to be honest. She didn't make the episode. Offset made that episode. And then I've seen her several other times with people like Suki on and things of that nature. And my thing is, I mean, if we want to toss around the term, let's toss around, toss around the term culture vulture, okay? I don't believe that this, should, this girl should get a pass to be a part of our culture. That's just my personal opinion. I think that we have Funny Marco. And I think that they need to lean into Funny Marco and put him on. There's no reason why this girl should be put on for doing the same thing that somebody before her was doing. Like, I don't know. I, I, it just, I don't know. I know people, you know, take stuff and make it their own all the time. But for the life of me, I just can't wrap my mind around why she's famous. But nonetheless, um... I was reading up on a story. This is how she kind of crossed my mind to just let y'all know how I feel about her and kind of just see how y'all feel about her too. It's because I read a article about, um, she did a panel discussion with the owner of L'Oreal um, about Sarah V. And basically the long story short about the situation is she did this panel. She was interviewing the CEO of this company 
And she was very like shy. And as a person who has struggled with social anxiety at times when it comes to bigger crowds and also like public speaking and things of that nature, I'm not going to judge her for not having a certain level of confidence about her. But at the same time, I feel as though she's able to get so much of a pass because of it. Like, challenge yourself to be better, sis. Because at this point, I feel like she's singing the same sad love song over and over and over and over again. And she's just, you know, using her privilege to get put on. Um, I don't know. It it bothered me that she got put on on such a big capacity when I know there's so many other people who are way more talented, way more prepared, way more entertaining than she is that could have got put on that platform on a big platform as such as L'Oreal, like that type of brand, that type of recognition. Um, so that was the thing that triggered me to want to talk about her. But then, like, let's keep on going. Because I brought up Funny Marco and I brought up her relationship with Funny Marco. So, like I said, Funny Marco, he took the situation that happened between her and him. And basically, you know, he he had lemons. He made lemonade with the situation. He didn't tuck his tail and run. He basically said, you know what? This girl, she took my style, whatever the case may be. She kind of blew up bigger than me. However, I'm going to go ahead, partner up with Shorty. And we're going to try to make something shake. Well... They see he, he he decided to partner up with her and go on a comedy tour. Now I'm not sure if you all heard about this comedy tour, but the comedy tour was supposed to be several different cities. Um, when I say like literally sold out appearances, and Marco even admitted to the fact that these audience were predominantly people looking to see Bobby. So she has a cult type of following at this point. And he admits that and he says that they had a few appearances and it ended up with him actually canceling the tour because when he got on stage, she was very blase and couldn't hold the crowd and couldn't keep the attention. She was very boring to the point where people were like asking for refunds and things like that. Like they was walking out because they didn't like, it wasn't an enjoyable show. And... I think that's just a testament to, I'm a strong believer in what's for you is for you. And I'm a strong believer in, I don't have to gatekeep because you can't do it like I do it. Just because I give you the key don't mean you can unlock the door. And so I feel like it's a similar situation with her where she took what Funny Marco was doing and... She thought that she was going to be able to pick it up and run with it. And she didn't prepare herself. She didn't force herself to be better. And I feel like that's why now we're seeing her kind of show her hand, so to speak, because she can't keep up this facade no more. At first it was, oh, she's a cute little white girl. Oh, she got a little bit of attitude. Oh, blah, 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 blah. But now it's like, okay, I think your 15 minutes is up. Let's move on. But hey, listen, that's my personal opinion, okay? You know, y'all let me know in the chat. If y'all have seen Bobby Altoff and any of her stand-up and any of her interviews and any of her content that she creates, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about her? Is her 15 minutes up? Or should we give sis a little bit of slack and let her rise to the occasion? But personally, it's a no for me, doc. Like, it's a no for me. It's definitely a no for me. Um, I'm always going to rock with Funny Marco because Funny Marco blazed the trail. He he, the, he blazed the trail. He did something that a lot of comedians weren't doing in his time. And like I said, people take things and make it their own all the time. So I'm not upset about her taking what he did. However, she took it and did it verbatim and she didn't make it her own. And that's why I have a problem with her. So... I just wanted to go on a rant, okay? I just wanted to go on a rant, you know? Ain't no ain't no big news going on with uh, Bobby Altoff this week. I just wanted to let y'all know how I feel. So let me know how y'all feel down in the chat. Next topic that I would like to talk about. Like I said, listen, this episode is just a real, you know, 
light episode. It's, it's, a, it's a palate cleanser episode. Um, still want got a lot of things to talk about, but a lot of this is mainly opinion, okay? Just how I was feeling about things that were going on in the media. Now, so um, a lot of my viewers are from the DMV area, from the Maryland area. And so a lot of you may know and may be familiar with the popular food critic. And some of you may know him more so because of his um, his UFC fighting days. But Keith Lee. Now, Keith Lee is one of my favorite. And we talked about Keith Lee on the episode where we talked about the uh, BET Awards and the mishap that happened between him and Taraji where she mistook him for somebody else. And I told you how I felt about that. So listen, I'm going sta- to stand by my guy. Listen, I love me some Keith Lee. I love his spirit. I just love everything about him. Uh, but Keith Lee came to the DMV uh, this past week. Okay. And I was very upset because I'm like, out of all the weekends, out of all the days that I travel up and down 83, 83 South, going to Baltimore, why couldn't I be there when Keith Lee was there? Okay. He was in Rosedale. My mother lives in Overly. Like that's literally right around the corner. Like. I really feel a certain type of way that I wasn't in the city. Okay. Listen, that would have made my life just to walk up on Keith Lee. Like, I don't know what I I really don't know what I would have said to him, but I probably would have walked up to him like this. (laughs) Say no, I wouldn't have walked up to him like that, but I would have loved to see Keith Lee. I probably would have literally told him how I feel about him because I just feel as though like he's, he's definitely a vessel and I feel as though he's using his platform for good. And I feel like he's such a humble person, such a sweet person. And literally, like, the things that he's doing for these businesses, especially Black-owned businesses, especially minority-owned businesses um, who are struggling, I think it's an amazing thing, especially in this economy where people are struggling. Um, So I, I really admire what he does. But I wanted to talk about Keith Lee because Keith Lee came to Maryland, okay? Keith Lee came to Maryland and went to a crab shack in Rosedale. (laughs) <laughs> it's called Collar's Crab House. Now, of course, those who know uh, Keith Lee know that he is allergic to shellfish. So he like does not fool with no shellfish at all. But also, if you know Keith Lee, you know that a lot of the times he doesn't come to these restaurants specifically like as himself he sends his wife or his sister in and then they're the ones who review the food and things of that nature so the sister and the wife they go in they get like a little half dozen of crabs and then they post up outside the building um like kind of in their little spinner van and they eat the crabs now everybody on the internet was cringing because the problem with the video was not the fact that they was eating crabs it was the fact that the way that they was opening the crabs like as a person from maryland we're very touchy like maryland like baltimore like in in the chesapeake area okay we're very touchy about our seafood if it don't have no old bay take it back and redo it okay we need the old bay we like our butter a certain type of way Listen, we we we've been doing this since we was kids, okay? I learned how to pick a crab when I was like 10 years old, maybe even less than that. I grew up when when our parents was like, if you can't pick it, you don't eat it. So we bought this life for real in Maryland. So it burnt everybody up that they were sitting here cracking these crabs like this and everybody like why do you look like they doing like cpr compressions like they try to bring these crabs back to life and that's how they open these crabs now my thing is i mean i guess it's a method to to the madness because they were turning them damn crabs up okay i couldn't tell the difference they look like they got all the meat that they were supposed to get (laughs) and i was like hmm they may be on to something i might try that next time but they went, they st- they tried the crabs, uh, and they gave the crabs a very, very, very high rating. Now, fast forward, they go to D.C., and Keith says that he went to several places in the D.C. area, and he marks it a big old thumbs down. He said the food was not good. He said out of all the places that they reviewed, he's literally only going to post, like, 
a couple of them, like a handful, because he said it's not constructive criticism. And that's why I stand by him because his goal is really not to come up on the backs of other people um, by talking crap to people or making their situation worse. He literally only post constructive criticism in order to help these companies thrive um so <laughs> i wish i could say that the dmv had good food um uh, but of course like for the places that he went to which were probably like mom and pop shops and things of that nature i haven't really had much experience with it so i can't speak on it uh but i will say like there's some good like more you know upscale places in dc that i've tried so i don't know listen did y'all run into keith lee did any of y'all see him <laughs> listen if you saw them listen send me the pictures i want to see i want to live through you but um yeah how did y'all feel about them how, the way he was opening them crabs how did y'all feel if y'all saw the video how did you feel about it now the last thing that i would like to spill the tea about today is also another thing where like i said i'm just giving out i'm just giving out unsolicited opinions today <laughs> I'm giving out unsolicited opinions today. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this next thing is because, as you all know, I am a filmmaker. And one of my biggest influences, and you know, it's, it's a spot reserved for him on this wall. Right now, I got my good old boy, Nip, that we talked about at the beginning. And then y'all can't really see it, but Shikari is up there. But this next spot on the wall is reserved for one of my favorite directors. Besides Spike Lee, he's one of my favorite directors. Like He's probably like my top director that I love is John Singleton. Now, John Singleton is most notably known for Boys in the Hood, Poetic Justice. Um, he's known for so many different things. Like even more new uh newer pieces of work he's responsible for a lot of that stuff but the movie that i want to talk about today is one of my favorites which is baby boy now the reason why i want to talk about baby boy is because tyrese has been making his latest press run and he went on a million dollars worth of game podcast and they like basically got on a conversation about his experience shooting baby boy and i thought it was quite interesting to hear this story because I don't know. Like I said, I love John Singleton. So it kind of made me feel like I connected to it a little bit. But he basically goes on a story, which I never knew, was that John Singleton actually wrote this film for Tupac. And basically, when Tupac passed away, he wasn't even sure whether he was going to like bring this story to the big screen or not. Because he just had so much loyalty for Pac. And so he goes on to give this role to... Tyrese who then goes on to play Jody because he felt like he embodied as much of Pac as any person did in this world and I thought that was so cool because you know I can absolutely see like the the influences like who he wrote it for through how Tyrese portrayed Jody's character so I, I, I can only imagine what that movie would have been like with Pac but at the same time like would it have been the hood classic that it is today if Tyrese never did it? Because, like, that's one of my movies, like, that I can, like, say word for word without even looking at the screen. And I'm not even going to look. I got some strawberry Kool-Aid, some water. <laughs> listen, I can't even tell y'all what my favorite line is. Um... You know, but listen, I can't even tell you what my favorite line is because it got a lot of cussing. Y'all know that movie is a little vulgar, but that movie is my movie. And so Tyrese goes on a million dollars worth of podcast, million dollars worth of game podcast, and they t get to talking about the iconic scene between him and Ving Rhames where they get into an argument. And he goes on to tell this beautiful story about how John Singleton, like, this is why I love John Singleton. And this is probably how I got my director style um, is because John Singleton pulled that emotion out of him. He explains like that he was never an actor before this film. And he says that John Singleton knew a little bit about his background enough to be able to get that emotion out of him and enough to know that his story in real life mimicked what he was going on, what, what he had going on in that scene with dealing with his mother's love interest or whatever, trying to come in and step up. 
And so he goes on to basically talk about how he was truly triggered in that scene. And to this day, he says, like, when he look at Ving Rhames, like, he side at him or whatever the case may be. And, of course, he's playing. Um, but he goes on to basically say, like, when he's standing and be like, I got heat for niggas like you, cuz. <laughs> and um, he goes on to say how, like, that line wasn't even in the script. He was like, John Singleton fed the information to Ving Rhames. So he gave Ving Rhames Tyrese's mother's name. And basically, Ving Rhames was talking to Tyrese in the sense of what they, like, as if he was dealing with his actual mom. And so that helped Tyrese get into the role so much to the point where, like, he really came out and, like, he gave that energy what we saw on a big screen. And so I thought that was so interesting, like just to hear that story, uh, because like, it's, it's a testament to like, just cause the script is set. Don't mean it's set. Like some of the best lines that we got out of movies were lines that weren't necessarily playing. And my favorite is anybody coming to see you Otis. <laughs> like that line was never in the script. Um, so I don't know, just those are the type of things that just interest me because I'm a director and I'm a filmmaker. So I really find joy in those little gems and knowing that like those little pieces weren't playing. But he goes on to this podcast. And another thing, like Tyrese, like he has a certain type of image in the media especially as of lately, uh, because, you know, Tyrese has been around for a long time. You know, some of us... Some of us first seen Tyrese on, you know, the... I believe it was, what, Pepsi commercial? Where he came on there, he was singing on the bus. Some of us may not be old enough to know that. <laughs> Uh, some of us may remember him when he was on Moesha, um, and he was singing on there and, you know, he used to have a little piercing right here, whatever. Um, some of us may not be old enough to remember that, but I you know Tyrese from a lot of things before baby boy and others know him because of his mental breakdown that he had a few years ago. <laughs> Where he started crying. And I hate to laugh. Like. What more do you want from me? <laughs> it's going to always be a meme. I'm sorry Tyrese. We still love you. Um, and of course there's a whole story about. Why he had that breakdown. Um, as far as like different medications. That he was on. That was you know manipulating his. His mental state and things of that nature. And mental health is nothing to play with. Um, so you know. Like I said, the whole point of that was just to say, we've seen Tyrese through many phases of his life. And one of the things that I will say is he's consistent. He's consi consistently himself. He's consistently um, that guy. Like now at this point, he can sing his behind off. Now at this point, he's an amazing actor. So he's, I mean, he's solidified, I mean, bank, okay? Um, so I, I don't really have anything bad to say about Tyrese and on the podcast, it was so funny because he's such a real guy to the point where he shows up to the podcast and like I said, he's on his press run. So nine times out of 10, his team are the ones who are, um, securing these appearances and he doesn't particularly know where he's going. So he shows up to the podcast not knowing whose podcast he was going to, where he was going. He just shows up. He said he showed up and he realized that it was Gilly and Wallow. And you should have saw the outfit he had on. He had on, like, it was it was a cool, chill little outfit, but it was very much demure. <laughs> very demure. Um, but he shows up with this outfit on and literally he's just like, yeah, nah, I got to change this because this is not my demographic. So he literally steals a pair of socks. He had on these little chinklas, little Ver Versace chinklas. And um, he steals a pair of black socks from one of the, uh, I guess the crew members from the podcast or whatever. And he's literally in there with just black socks on. And I guess he must have had like a black shirt and a black jacket somewhere or something. And he just threw that on with the jeans that he had on. And I just thought that was so crazy. I'm just like, yo, this man really stole this man's socks though. Like shook him down for his socks. 
Uh, so that he wasn't on the podcast looking too uppity and he looked good for his audience. Uh, but I don't know. You can say whatever you want to say about Tyrese, but I'm going to just have to petition y'all to put some respect on his name because Tyrese been in the game for a minute. And, um, like I said, he, he is true to himself. So I don't, I don't have much to say about that. But uh, what are your thoughts? You know, how do y'all feel about Tyrese in the media lately? Like, how do you feel about his transition from singing to acting? Like, do you think he's a good actor? I don't know. Maybe that's debatable. Have you ever seen Baby Boy? And if you haven't seen Baby Boy, go watch Baby Boy. So there's that. <laughs> But that is the end of the episode, guys. Listen, I had a lot that I wanted to talk about. Like I told y'all, it was more opinion this week. I just had a lot of things that I wanted to get off my chest. Um, Just different things that I, I felt passionately about. Maybe y'all felt passionately about it too. I don't know. Uh, but let me know your thoughts in the chat about any one of these topics that we talked about. Now, before I let you guys go, as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And help your sister get the 200 subscribers on the YouTube channel. And also, click the, the little share button at the bottom. Don't be stingy. Share it with a friend. So, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Sister Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Gold Chain Diva. And you can follow me on all social media at Gold Chain underscore underscore Diva. Thanks for tuning in and have a great night.